Good morning everyone. Today we're going to take a quick look at Hyper-V Live Migration and how this actually works. We can set it up really quickly and really easily. So over here on the whiteboard, very quickly, we are going to have two servers, okay? One of these servers is going to be called SVR2 and the other server is going to be called SVR3. Both of these are running Windows Server. Both of these are actually going to be running Hyper-V all nicely installed on those servers. On our server 2, I'm going to be running a virtual machine called SVR5. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to live migrate that machine. What that means is we're going to take this whole virtual machine, SVR5, and move it from SVR2 to SVR3. And we're going to do that while people are still actually actively using that machine. So we get to do it with no downtime. One of the cool things about Hyper-V is you don't need any centralized storage to do this either. We can actually do this with storage existing only on SVR2 and SVR3. We don't need SANS or anything like that. So the setup process is pretty simple, so let's get straight into it, set this up on both of these servers and live migrate a virtual machine. Okay, so I'm over here on my LON SVR2 and I can see that I have my LON SVR5 virtual machine ready to live migrate. I'm also going to want remote control over the other server, so I'm just going to make another connection here. And I'm going to add LON SVR3 here into my Hyper-V manager. So let's go back to LON SVR2 and let's turn on live migration. If I go into Hyper-V settings and I click live migrations, tick this box for enable incoming and outgoing live migrations, that's it. That's literally all I have to do. But there's a couple of extra things I want to tweak here. So I want to make sure to use any available network for live migration. You can limit your live migration traffic to an individual network card or IP address if you have uh, combined software defined network cards as well. But I can use any network card on this. It's just a test environment. That would be if you wanted to separate your live migration traffic from your live traffic. If I click on advanced features, there's a few options here. The different authentication protocols, Credit SSP or Kerberos. If I'm using Credit SSP, I need to be logged in to the host machine. I am logged into the host machine, so that's fine. I will keep using that. If I was to change this to Kerberos, what I would have to do is make some changes in Active Directory and basically give each host the ability to trust each other. That would allow me to live migrate with scripts um, or in the background without being actively logged into the system. Looking at the performance options, our three performance options here, TCP IP, compression, and SMB. Depending on which one you choose, the live migration process will still work exactly the same. Uh, but you might find that if, for example, you have multiple network cards, that live migration will work faster if we're using the SMB protocols, and more specifically, SMB3 or above, that can use multiple network cards uh, for not just high availability, but for more throughput between different systems. If you leave it on compression by default, this is probably best. Uh, we've got lots of CPU power nowadays and it uses some of that CPU power to compress the traffic to make this actually go faster. And if we're using TCP IP, this is just going to use standard packets to transfer without any compression or without any balancing on there. So leave it on by default by compression and everything should be perfectly fine. Now, I also need to do that on the other server, on LON SVR3, if I click on Hyper-V settings, and I need to do this on every single server that I want to actually migrate to. So make sure I've got incoming and outgoing live migrations and use any available network. We can apply that. Uh, check our advanced features, cred SSP, compression, that's all good. But we're done. That's the whole setup for live migration on these multiple servers. Now what I can do is I can go back to this LON SVR5. Let's just start this machine. So if I start this machine and wait for it to start up, let's go and connect to that computer and we'll just wait for it to boot. Okay, so this machine has booted. Let's actually give this something to do. So let's just give it a ping. Oh, 127.0.0.1 dash t so it's just got some form of output actually happening here on the screen while we do a live migration now while that's doing its thing if i just right click on this server and if i want to move it all i have to do is select move this is going to bring me up a wizard and it gives me a couple of options i can move the machine i can move the virtual machine storage so you can actually move the hard drive of the virtual machine the virtual hard drive without moving the place where the virtual machine is actually running so the virtual hard drive can be on a completely different server to the virtual machine's actual running state if we choose to move the virtual machine, that will also move the virtual machine and the virtual hard drive and all its configurations as well. So let's go and browse where I actually want to move that to. And I'm going to type in SVR, or sorry, the full name, LON-SVR3. 
3, which is the remote computer. Now it's going to ask me where on this remote machine I want to actually move this to. So I want to move this virtual machine's data to a single location. I don't want to split up the configuration or the virtual hard drives. And the location here, the destination location, take note, this is actually the location on LON SVR3, on the remote server. So I'm just going to come in here, um, and I'm just going to select a folder, so I'm just going to go into shares and we'll just put this into storage migration and select that folder there. It can be any folder you actually want on your hard drives. Click next on that one, click finish, and that's it. Notice up here at the top, it is creating that remote virtual machine here and it's starting to perform the move operation. This will take a couple of minutes to do and if we go back to our existing computer, we can see that this is still working is still interacting. If I control C on that, I can still interact with this and still work with this computer as this move is being actually done. So we'll give that a couple of minutes to complete the operation and we'll see what it looks like on the other side. Okay, our live migration is complete. We can see now on LON SVR2, we have no virtual machines running. But if I turn over to LON SVR3, there is my LON SVR5 nicely running. If I go and look at that machine, it's still working, it's still up. I still have not dropped the connection at all and Hyper-V has automatically switched this over. So it's now running on SVR3. And that's it. That's that simple to set up live migration within Hyper-V in a couple of minutes between two servers. This same process can be expanded out to many different servers. You can have a matrix of 10, 20 physical hosts and be able to live migrate between them all. I hope you enjoy this quick demo and you'll join me next time for some more Hyper-V, Azure, PowerShell and general computing tips, tricks and videos. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.